Hi thinkers, welcome to ThinkX Academy. In this video, I'm going to give you a roadmap of data structures and algorithms. I've already created a part one of this video, which is the roadmap of data structures and algorithms on this channel uh, a year ago and I got a lot of good response from you guys. So I decided why not to make another part and in this part, I have included some more things like I have included some more algorithms and I've also taken some questions which I will discuss at the end of this video. So make sure to watch this video till the end. If you're new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe our channel. You will get a lot of good content related to computer science on this channel and it will also motivate me to create more content for you guys. So let's get started with the video. So let's start with the data structures. Here we have all the data structures and here we have the algorithms. In the first part, I will st uh, we will discuss about the data structures. The first data structure is you can see arrays or list. Basically, these are also known as ADT, right, or abstract data types. So first, you need to uh, understand what exactly is an array. In Python, we have list, right? So I have included list here also because there are some data structures, for example, stacks, which uh, we can implement using an array. Right, so that's why it is important that you first understand uh, what are arrays and the most important thing is you should know how it is allocated inside the memory. So for each and every data structure, basically all the data structures are just basically data which have some defined structure and the reason why we have so many data structures is because for different types of data, we can uh, have different types of structure which will give us a different time complexity for different operations. For example, uh, we have some operations like insertion, searching and deletion, right? Let's consider deletion also. So for different data structures, because they have different structure of how they are stored inside the memory, and why we are saying that it is stored inside the memory is because the CPU accesses the main memory, which is the RAM. So you need to understand how these data structures are stored in the main memory, right? So the next data structure is stacks data structure, which you can implement using an array or a linked list. The next one is an important concept, which is the memory referencing or the pointers. Now, pointers are very important because in C++ we have pointers in other programming languages like Python and Java we have memory referencing right so there are ways to reference the memory and in C++ we can use pointers for that in Python and Java we can also use some different techniques like we can use the object references to uh, because Java is an uh, object oriented programming language also so here we can create objects and we can use object referencing to perform the memory referencing thing, right? And why we're studying memory referencing and pointers is because all the tutorials, all the topics in the data structures here, they are going to use referencing or the pointers, right? Let's consider linked list. Linked list can be of three types, singly linked list, doubly linked list and circular linked list, right? So all of these data structures, I've aligned them in a way that you should start from this one and you should follow up like this, right? So first you need to study arrays, then stacks, and then linked list and like that. Now we have linked list, singly, doubly, and circular. You implement linked list using memory referencing or pointers. So for that, you need to understand how data is stored inside the memory and how the CPU access it, right? These are basics. And then we have the queues data structure. Again, we can implement queues using arrays also and linked list. So, so you can implement that also. Then we have binary trees, which are implemented using uh, again pointers. For that, we have different types of binary trees. We have binary search tree, we have avial trees and we have red black trees. So you will have to cover all of them. Then we have the heap data structure. The heap data structure is basically the visualization of the binary as a binary tree, right? It is an array visualization of the binary tree. And in that we have a topic which is heap sorting. 
we have min, min, min and max heaps also which you will have to study in this topic. Then comes graph theory which is really important for the interviews and the reason is because it is also included in algorithms also. There are certain algorithms which we apply to the graph theory as well. We have adjacency list, adjacency matrix which is used to represent a graph data structure. Then we have some certain techniques which is the breadth per search commonly known as BFS and we have the depth per search which is DFS. Then the last one is the hash tables and in that you, can, you will have to understand a concept known as collision handling. So this is all the data structures that you need to study and they are enough for the interviews. There are some more data structures that you can study but I think these are the baseline. These, are, these will cover all the basics also, right? Now we have some algorithms here. In the algorithms part, we have searching techniques. You will have to start with the searching part. You will have to cover linear search and binary search. Then you can come to sorting and you, you have different sorting mechanisms here, which is selection sort, bubble sort, insertion sort, merge sort, quick sort and radix sort, right? So there are so many types of sorting techniques here. Then comes the greedy algorithms. Greedy algorithms are really important for competitive programming. So you need to understand how greedy algorithms work. In the greedy algorithm, we have knapsack problem, subset problem, uh, sorry, subset sum problem. So there are various problems that you can pick up from the internet and you can solve them, which are the greedy algorithms. Then we have a dynamic programming, right, in which uh, we actually optimize the greedy algorithm because for some problems, we actually, we can optimize those algorithms using the dynamic programming. In that, you can take a very simple example of Fibonacci series to implement a simple example of the dynamic programming. Then we have the graph algorithms. Now remember, this is data structures and this is algorithms. What should you start first, data structures or, or algorithm? Well, the answer is you can do them parallelly, right? So while you're studying arrays, stacks, you can also study searching and sorting because they are not interrelated. But one important thing is that you will have to first study graph theory and then only you can study graph algorithms, right? So they are, you cannot do them parallelly. You will first have to cover this part and then you can cover all the graph algorithms which is the Jekstra's shortest path algorithm, very important algorithm. You will use this algorithm a lot of times in various uh, fields of computer programming. Then we have the Prince algorithm and the Kruskal algorithm. Then finally we have the big O notation and in this uh, there is a concept which is master theorem and this master theorem is actually used to find out the big O which is the time complexity of a particular algorithm, right? So I'm going to write here time complexity. Now, in all these data structures and algorithm, time complexity plays a very important role. So for each of them, you should know what is the big O of time which is going to take in all of these operations in these data structures and also in these algorithms. For example, you should know how much time will it take to do a search inside of a binary tree, right? And for example, in binary, it will take a time of big O of log n or n log n to search. And there are in a linked list, if you want to do a search, you will have to use big O of n. So for various data structures and for various algorithms, we have different types of time complexity. And that's the main reason why we have so many different algorithms. We keep optimizing these, uh, these algorithms. So that's why uh, time complexity is very important. Now, the, uh, let's move on to some of the questions that you have, got, uh, you, you have asked from me. The first is, which programming language should you use, C++, Python or Java? Right, so this is a very uh, specific uh, question for different types of users, for different types of people. Some will choose Python, some will choose Java, some will choose C++, but I will recommend that if you want to become an Android developer, then you can uh, you you will have to forcefully study these algorithms in Java only, right? Because Java is used for Android development also. Then if you want to become a Python developer in the future, so at this point you need to decide 
which type of developer you want to become in the future because uh, if you will study uh, these algorithms and these data structures let's say you study it in python right now and in the future you decide that you want to become become an android developer so in that case you have wasted a lot of time coding in python and then uh, you you're actually trying to switch to a different uh, programming language right so it is a very important tip to save your time even i have made this mistake i studied uh, c plus the, these uh, in c plus plus and then i since i am currently an android developer so uh, for ja i'm currently studying java so i will have to study them all and implement them again in java right so uh, i'm just trying to save your time more right next is this enough for interviews this is a very simple question well uh, these are the basics of data structures and algorithms and also some advanced concepts are also there so yes these are enough for interviews but in order to crack the interview you will have to do more and more problems in dynamic programming and greedy algorithm and graph algorithms also right so you should have a good understanding of how these data structures and these algorithms are working because if the in the in an interview the interviewer will ask you questions related to how this data structure is allocated inside the memory and how much time complexity this will take uh, in insertion then you will have to answer him right now how much time will it take to learn data structures and algorithms right so how much time will it take well i studied all of them in three months of time right and in these three months i, I was also studying for my college subjects also so side by side i gave only uh, two to three hours a day for three months and weekly i give four to five days and i was able to cover all of these topics in three months so that's it and now we have the free resources on this channel thinkx academy i have created a playlist on algorithms and data structures in c++ right i will give the link to them in the description of this video so the, uh, in these playlist you uh, all these videos are in the right order so you will have to start from the first video and go in this order similarly for algorithms also you can do the same and uh, there are some tips that i want to give to learn these concepts and you will remember it forever the first thing is when, once you are starting the playlist from the playlist you are learning any video let's say you are now currently in sorting techniques and you are learning selection sort from this video on this channel right i have created a video on selection sort i have basically created videos on all of these topics so you can see them in the on this channel and they are available for free so that's a great thing now if you take a look at selection sort which is in this video what you need to do is uh, you you're watching the video and side by side you will have to make sure that you make notes also right in the notes you can write all the important points of the selection sort and if possible you can also write the whole uh, algorithm inside your notes and since i have al also included the implementation of all of them in c++ i also have a uh, playlist on python also data structures in python uh, i have not completed that playlist it is currently uh, in progress so you can also try that out if you want to learn python we have some tutorials on that also so i hope you have liked this video if you have liked my efforts make sure to like this video and if you have any doubts you can ask them in the comments below i always answer all your all of your doubts and if you want to follow me you can follow us on instagram and facebook also so that you will not miss any videos and whenever we launch any course we always uh, sh uh, write a post on our instagram handle also so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching and thanks for supporting us